start, I'm going to call the meeting to order, which is what officially has to be done, and someone has to second that motion. Nope, nope, oh. nope, you just can open. Yeah. Okay. You just so did. now we're open. And <laughs> our second item on the agenda is introduction. So I'm thinking we can all go around and introduce ourselves to see how many faces here. Um, I'm Steph, I'm a senior at Washington High School, and I'm the chair. I'm Will, I'm a sophomore at Will. Um, I'm Georgie, I'm a junior at Northampton, and I'm coach at COVID, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm Ezra, I'm also a junior. I'm Charlie, I am a senior at Northampton, and I am the coach at I'm Alex, I'm a senior at Northampton High School, I'm the coach secretary. Uh, I'm Lyndon, I'm a junior at Northampton, and I'm new. Uh, I'm Patrick, I'm a junior at Northampton High School, and you guys would know who I am if my name was August. I'm Jack, I'm a senior at Northampton High School. I'm Shervain, I'm a junior at Northampton High School. Um, I'm Liam, and I'm a senior at Northampton High School. I'm Ryan, I'm a senior at NHS, and I'm the other co-secretary. I'm a city councilor Bill Dwight, and I'm the council liaison to the Northampton Mayor's Union. I'm, I'm Michaela, I'm a junior at Northampton High School, and I'm co-vice chair with Georgie. Nice. Okay, and I also thought we could start by getting brief rundown on the recent election, but we We can do that, that. yeah. Um, the, most of the, uh, all the incumbents were, um, in city council race or re-elected. That would be myself and Councilor Adams, and we had a contested race. No other contested council races. A new councilor for Ward 2 will be um, sworn in in January. His name is Dennis Goodwell, so if you live in Ward 2, he'll be a new council. Uh, school committee races. Um, Nat Reed and Molly Burnham won, defeating um, Blue Duval, Jet's mom. Um, and uh, Carrie Nakerchuk. And then <coughs> Tom Baird won a school committee in Ward 6, and there were no other contested races. And the Forbes Library Trust, which the trustees, which almost no one followed, but that actually the, um, the Joe Torwag, his daughter was former chair of this committee. Both his daughters were former chairs of this committee. Um, uh, he won, Katie White won, and Elaine Real won. The, it was, you know, I, from my perspective, it was a fine election. My big disappointment was that sixteen percent of the voters voted in the election. Sixteen percent. That means I got forty-four percent of sixteen percent. That means you could fit everyone who voted for me in a bus. That's an exaggeration, but the fact is that it's not a mandate. And the thing is, um, I can't go out in government and tell people. I have the will of the people behind me because it's only it's only a small fraction of the people who are eligible to vote. So, and that's part of the frustration. The reason that happened this year was there was for the first time ever there was no mayor on the ticket because the mayor now is four year terms. So as a result, the the sexiest race on the ballot was mine, and I got to say it wasn't all that sexy. So um, we did have an opponent, and. It's good that he was there. It really it helps one to create debate and push back when people have questions, and it also forces me and Councilor Adams to answer for the things that we've done. If, if people find that they're worth challenging, it gives us an opportunity to say why we did what we did, and that's the disappointing part. So what happens is that level of complacency is really very disturbing because once you give over, that means you know, lots of folks are gonna vote in the presidential election which comes up next, 2016. And the fact is, is that whatever happens in the presidential election doesn't translate quite as directly as to what happens to you when someone like me decides that I wanna create bike trails or if I want to reduce funding for the schools, that stuff affects you directly. Bernie Sanders or Donald Trump are not going to make a difference on that one way or the other actually. So as long as you guys understand that, you can pass it on to anyone else you think who's, who should vote and, and make the case because it is kind of important. And, uh, so 
That's the editorializing. That's essentially the breakdown of the election. It was, it was, it was it's a Northampton municipal election with no burning issues. So. Do you know what age group was mostly represented in this? It doesn't. It doesn't say because it's a secret yeah. ballot. Uh -huh. So, but traditionally, older people vote. And when I say older, I'm saying 60 and over. They vote regularly. So, um, and then your cohort, actually new voters do pretty well. They, once they're registered, they, they go vote. Um, so it's the 20s. The hmm? registration thing? Yeah, and that registration thing that, that uh, the state's making it easier for you guys to register. You can register starting at 16 and you'll automatically be registered to vote by the time you turn 18. Um, you can register online, which is the first time that was allowed. And maybe, maybe in a couple of years, you actually can vote online, which would be great. And improve participation on, um, in elections. So, and, and it's the millennials, it's the 20-somethings that are not voting. And it's the 30, 40-somethings that are not voting, as a rule, demographically. But I don't know if that's the case in this instance, so. But, so there you go. That's the election. And I'll come get, if you have signs in your lawn, I'll come get them. <laughs> I'm going to pick them up tonight, maybe, I don't know. And I, I have to say, by the way, it just so, I don't even know if this is on the agenda, but when we met with the DA's office, yeah. the DA it's group, right. Mikhail was a star. She was a star. Yeah. It, it was, it's, because the district attorney, the Northwest District Attorney, which is David Sullivan, actually prosecutes all the criminal cases. Yeah, in the western region, the northwest region, all the way through here and out through, I mean, he's, he's a big muckety muck. And um, they were talking about all the programming, particularly relative to opioid use and opioid deaths and interventions. And then they got to the point where they were talking about the. Um, they just went around. Yeah, they went around and asked everyone, that's right. You go ahead and you tell it. You tell yeah, it. Oh, um, okay. I guess. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. Um, <laughs> kind of. They, we talked, this lady came in and talked about um, the opioid crisis in the area and after she gave a big presentation and then she had to leave, but then um, the DA kind of asked everyone to go around and talk about any issue related to the opioid crisis or not that they wanted to talk about at future meetings or any projects they wanted to start. And I didn't really know what to say because I hadn't been to any meetings, but I basically said that um, I felt like like youth education about these issues is BS. Like mm -hmm. people try to scare us out of doing drugs and that's not effective. You know, people get scared for the five minutes and then they forget about it. If they just you know, I I don't know. That was you said I mean she said that that the posters are silly, no one pays attention to the posters. Yeah, I talked about and those that, stupid posters. Yeah, and she, and she was yeah. me. The North Hampshire Prevention Coalition. Yeah, we're in high school. Say yeah. like four out of ten. Like Wait, but that guy's rad. They're entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're yeah, they're like humorous, if anything. Yeah. Right. Well, but that's they, what like, she said. Don't make. They don't make sense. Like four out of five people don't want to eat junk food if it means they'd have to give up TV. Like that doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that one today while waiting to get the shirt. Oh, they're up already. Yeah. So what did you? have a suggestion as an alternative? Um, I mean, I sort of said I thought like more scientific education about it is generally more um, helpful and like effective in my opinion. You mean like statistics like about long-term effects of drug use or yeah. death statistics or things like that? Something more relevant than, you know, NHS students don't do drugs. Yeah, because like that's not true. And so the statistics are—I you have to question their statistical methods. It wasn't as much the statistics either. Cause statistics are overused, I think, to scare people too. Yes, or used incorrectly. Like, yeah. Don't good. don't a lot of them come directly from that test or that the the survey? Quiz. Yeah, so yeah. they're definitely pretty accurate. They come straight from what students fill out. Well, the people who choose to take them. Exactly. The representative of the whole student body, I don't think. I we don't know exactly them. how they're done. Yeah, I thought that. Uh, uh, I've like never taken one. Test. It's like they did it junior and freshman. I took it during my, my advisory. Yeah. 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 And everybody goes to advisory. And everyone goes to advisory. 
Hold on. It's not a thing. Let's stop. Let's not go there. But that that survey was designed to. Um, well, with the, I, I didn't know if it was designed for the campaign, but, but eventually they used the, the statistics that they gleaned from those surveys and made posters to reflect what <coughs> they saw was indicated in that. And to give the, the anti-drug message, the, I mean, in that, as I said, actually follow up from Kayla, that, that uh, anti-drug messages to youthful eyes have been pretty lame for about 40, 50, 60, more than that, 70 years. And they're either scare tactics or patronizing. They don't talk to people directly. They don't talk to people seriously about it. Uh, it it's, it's actually someone telling you what to or not to do and asking you what you think you should do or providing you with enough information one way or the other. So it was, it was actually a good point that it really struck the district attorney and uh, Lori Weisel, who was the woman you guys talked to, and they're going. They want to talk to Michaela, and they'll probably want to talk to you guys. They did say they want to talk. They want to come here and talk about what you think is actually a reasonable program of of just trying to convey the information that would allow you to make rational decisions when and if you decide to uh, indulge in substances. Uh, that mine alter that have mine altering effects. So, I th I think that's a great opportunity. This is this is the these are the guys who are leading the way in the whole state and possibly the country that are using the programs for um, similar programs in the, in the country. So you guys actually be ground zero for that information and that discussion. So that would be pretty cool. Specifically, opioid abuse or no, drugs it's general? it's drugs in general. It's any and that includes alcohol and and smoking. And all the all the you know things that adults supposedly make adult decisions about, but then that for some reason that the the malleable brain of a youth is not capable of making clear judgments on. So I th think that's a conversation you guys get to have with them. I also think part of the problem is that like all drugs drugs are treated the same, like heroin and weed are treated like they're the same and they're not the same. I mean, and, and it's interesting because their criminal classification varies too. But you can go to jail in some cases. Once upon a time, you go to jail as long for getting caught with three seeds in your car as you would for having um, a dime bag of heroin. And there was no discrimination. That has long since changed. And I don't know if the, the same district attorney just pardoned the medical marijuana. That they gave him a 90 day suspended sentence for the. Um, this guy who was arrested for medical marijuana in, here in Northampton. Um, so the, there's clearly changing attitudes about that, and particularly with this district attorney. So I think there's an opportunity that you guys have a, you get to make an impression on. Them. And what were like other people's opinions on it? Like what did the DA have in mind as the program that you were that he was talking about? Well, they were they were talking. Actually, it was in relation to the fact that they were talking about this, you know, youth um, drug information program. And that, and then Michaela mentioned that the touches, that some of all the stuff that she's been exposed to were not particularly effective, uh, okay. and that were you know pretty much laughed at. And um, my comment was that for some reason we all forget what it was like to be teenagers. Just really weird. I mean, I know I know those same people as teenagers were laughing at the same thing that they were hearing from from authorities like the district attorney and other people like that. So there's got to be a better way to make the connection that it's not patronizing. There were also other programs, though, like there was like a vet, veterans program and right. like other stuff going on. I know the, the DA does this the annual conference at GCC. It just happened a few weeks ago mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for like mostly middle schools, but there's semi-schoolers like PBPA or right. even I think like fifth graders. They do about substance abuse, and you know, they do like workshops and stuff, and it's like a little more interactive. You know, people think for themselves, right? You know, something like that is good. And that and that kind of reinforcement will help them to be given that kind of feedback. Uh, they did speak more specifically about opioid deaths and opioid-related deaths and causality and what they need to do for rehab and how they try to prevent overdoses, which are up mm -hmm. a lot 
in this region, particularly North Northampton, has more overdose deaths than um, most of the other surrounding communities. So. Yeah, I think the opioid component of that is less relatable to high schoolers, but the general drug stuff, we should definitely consider partnering with them in the program or something. Well, the, the caution about opioids is that um, while you may not know many or any people who, who do heroin, the one of the leading contributors to heroin use is painkillers, um, prescribed painkillers. People are given they're given benzodiazepine and other type of painkillers for if you guys are running, you, you blow out a knee or something like that, and then you have a 30-day script for uh, a painkiller. When that script ends, you're actually addicted, and it's actually cheaper to go out and score illegal heroin, and you don't even have to inject it anymore because it's so pure. There starts, and that's how most of the um, addiction cases that are occurring in this region are, are happening. So that it's... You may not know someone, but you, you, you're all somewhat at risk, and that's one of the things we're talking about is doctors who are over-prescribing painkillers and pain medication for, for injury, um, which is fairly common. I mean, doctors are trying to make you feel better, but the fact is, is that those are also addictive. So that's one of the other things we're talking about, too. And that doesn't even really include, like, you know, gateway drugs, and, you know, you might think, oh, it's just, you know, just pot. But then, you know, eventually it may go on to be something more serious. It's the, it's the it starts. yeah, I mean, well, gateway drugs, that, they've been debating that for years, and now they're saying that essentially there is no real, gateway concepts might be misunderstood or clouded because it doesn't necessarily, one doesn't necessarily lead to the other. Mm -hmm. And just to risk factor. So it's just, but of course someone who's, who's just hell bent on getting high, Mm -hmm. is probably not going to be all that discriminating as to what the high is going to be like or what is going to cause the high and then consequently all them. And as Michaela said, there's vast differences in the deleterious effects of, uh, of the various substances you can use. One of the worst being alcohol, actually. As more physical, it, it creates more physical problems for long-term use. It's also very powerfully addictive. Tobacco is the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, 400,000 deaths related to tobacco alone. And people don't normally correlate that, correlate that as, as a drug, but that is a drug. And it's mm -hmm. not necessarily a gateway drug, but the fact is it certainly is powerfully addictive and lethal. So. But also, I was just like, I was in the Dunkin' Donuts for like 20 minutes. Like yesterday, like in the middle of the, or two days ago, just in the middle of the day waiting for something. And then it was literally like three or four people came in and they like spent each like 10 minutes in the bathroom and they were like, oh, I have to go to Com Street. And it's just like, that's like, it's like four people within like 20 minutes. And it's just like, that it's insane, kind of. Yeah, that, that was a lot. That was a lot. I mean, it's, and, and, you know, we talked about this before. There, there's a reason there's special locking systems for various bathrooms and various public restaurants here because of the fear of people overdosing in those bathrooms. That includes the city hall bathroom down here in the basement. So, what's that? The death bathroom. The death bathroom. <laughs> the, scary bathroom. <laughs> the, the scary, creepy, scaled death bathroom. Yes. But yeah, so it is, it's, it's very commonplace. And Narcan is now legal and distributed. Narcan actually automatically brings someone out of uh, cardiac arrest or uh, out of respiratory and cardiac arrest um, associated with overdosing, and all the medical personnel have that. But it's not always available to someone who's overdosing in a locked bathroom, so. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about that, but you can see, even if you know the person's overdosing, but the it's facility not a lot you do. It's just dial 911 if you see that mm -hmm. happening, and it's not even someone you know, dial 911. Yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah, maybe you have Ask Lori or anyone from the VA's office if they want to come in and talk sure. to us if we could consider on our list. We're talking, we're going to talk about um, potential future projects, and that could definitely be one of them. It sounds like there's a lot of interest with that. Um, moving on to item three, we're going to talk more about recruitment. Um, as you can all see, we're all Northampton High School students here, and this is a committee open to anyone who's a Northampton resident, so it's definitely not just exclusively adjust students, but we can never get really Smith Vogue or um, North Star, Charlemont or Williston. Um, can't, oh, 
you're the only exception. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but we can't really get, we never really get a lot of students from there. So does anyone have a connection with one of the schools? I went to PBPA. Oh, you did? Yeah. Do you still, are you still in contact, or could you get in contact with like, like administration? Uh, yeah. Could you get like mm -hmm. something in the bulletin there? Sure. If they have that? Uh, they're not that organized, but yeah, I can. Get I can the word out. Somehow. Get the word out. That'd be cool. Yeah. Just the people have to live in Northampton still, right? Oh, right. There's right. like 50% lives in Northampton. Yeah. So oh. that's pretty good. Nice. Yeah, the only qualification has to be under 18, and between 13 and 18, and Northampton residents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Did we ever get those? With folk for North Star. Hannah and I are still working on drafting those letters. Okay. But they yeah, will be going out to the superintendents of both of those schools. And how about JFK? Because I know 13. Yeah, yeah, we had those two 13 year olds. We had Chet and John. Can I, I bring my brother? Time? I guess JFK. Is he 13? Yeah. Yeah. Jet was here with the last yeah. one, right? Yes. I, I, I suspect that we did too many into the election. So it's, uh, she told me she's committed to this, so and I, yeah, and I can follow up with John too from you know, his mom. So I could bring my sister. Too. She's good. Bring Freddie. Bring Freddie. Yeah, Freddie and Jack. Yeah, Freddie and Jack. Yeah, I should bring Ollie. I should bring Ollie. I I think Ollie would like it. I don't know if Freddie would like it, but I think Ollie would like it. Evan would be great, actually. Evan's homeschooled too, and in North Star too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. That's a great idea. He's 16. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 It's Florence technically in Yes, that's good. Florence Florence is trying to kick me out. I'm trying to take step out. Northampton, and this confuses a lot of people, Northampton actually encompasses, and Florence is essentially a neighborhood, but it's, okay. it's a, so Florence, Leeds, Bay State, all that, those are all Northampton. Different zip codes sometimes, but they're Northampton. Yeah, so for those of you like informing other people about it at our next meeting, it's same time, same place on November 18th. So, okay. Two weeks from today. Yeah. Show up. Yeah. 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 Do you want to see her card? I think it's my Pepper card. Mm -hmm. I have a picture of her. Let's see if we can her stuff. She repeated her stuff. Oh, you have her you card. She didn't get in there. Time. Oh, wrong way. Oh, that's a very good one. Yeah, I really like her. Yeah, you yeah, get complimented her. I'll just start. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she gets a state DA's card with gold oh, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's like bump. It's, it's like green to It's embossed. Yeah. It's in, yeah. That's Lori's card. Or it was a uh, Gazette no, reporter and editor for 29 years. I know, that's in the car. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a bunch of weird stuff. Think I'm related to this guy? <laughs> Which guy? Dave Sullivan. Oh, Dave Sullivan? <laughs> All Sullivans are related. Don't you know that? Every single Sullivan is related. Yeah, there's so few that we talk about. Hard to find them. <laughs> so, other than the um, Pepper card, do you have any other program with the DA's office? About more education about drug abuse. Does anyone else have any like smaller scale ideas for projects this year? Um, Bill, are there any like ordinances or things? Well, you that? remember Ryan O'Donnell wants to come talk to you guys about doing the um, registration yes. resolution. Have you guys co sponsor that? So you come, that's one thing. We just don't know that much about it yet. Right. He's got to come and talk to you. And I was actually, I meant to line him up for tonight. That didn't work. So. Okay. Send me a note and I'll have come to the next meeting. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Um, Alex had an idea. What's Alex's idea? Um, I know the Y outdoor basketball courts could use some lights um, <laughs> for a nighttime mm -hmm. play, but that, that was it. That was actually going to say Well, unfortunately, because uh, the city has no authority over. 
the why that takes up the door. You were thinking we could just raise money and donate to them. <laughs> just, oh. just mount some LEDs up there and then yeah. just say, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Like the little kitchen LEDs that you like press the there cabinet one. There you go. Those little, little cabinet <laughs> pop up things. Yeah. The, the other thing for um, that's worth talking, and actually, you guys can actually talk to the Y about that as the youth commission if you want. Then you will have a conversation with if they talk about it. Then they have to have a conversation about when the lights are on, whether they disturb the neighbors, uh, all that stuff. You get to wade into that, but that's, it's never just as simple as putting a light up on a pole. Yeah. It's, so, but it's, it's, that's how these things get done and they get started slowly and it's, so that's, that's good. I bet they'd love to hear that. Or I don't, they actually they have a new director, so I don't know what the, the new director is like as far as that goes. But that's, that's worth asking about. I was thinking, you know, for, initiatives or things that you guys want to get involved in, there's, there's unfortunately, there's not in the immediate future any things coming down the pike uh, for the remainder of this year, and that means, you know, December 31st. Yeah. It's going to be in council. We only have, after tomorrow, we'll only have three meetings left for the year. So, um, but that's a good time for you guys to actually start thinking about we're starting a new council session. So that's when new initiatives are introduced. And if you guys have, I mean, if there's something that you think would be smart for us to do or something that we're doing that's not smart or something just doesn't make any sense and you think that we should deal with, you guys can sponsor a resolution or talk about a resolution and we can bring it to the council if you wanna, if you wanna. And you know, it just things that strike you when you're walking around, or the, the time you catch yourself going, "This is really stupid. What the hell are these guys thinking? Why does this? Why do we have to do this? Or why is this done?" Write it down, and we'll think, let's see if it makes sense, or if there's an explanation about it, or like what you guys were talking about was um, bike lane safety. We put in all these new bike lanes, and we're still trying to catch up with it, and there have been a, a number of accidents, as, as, as you guys noted, and there's some confusion about what the bike lanes are. So the bike lane disappears in the middle of an intersection by the hospital, and you go, what, what, what happened? And there there's, has, some, has to be some education as part of that, and uh, Chief Casper has been talking about doing something like that, too, so you guys can work on that. But, or, Think about a project like Benchwalk. Maybe there's something else that you want to do the, to uh, with downtown, or maybe on downtown Florence. I was feeling a little left out last time, so um, you know. Because Benchwalk was such a time-consuming event, I think we were going to sort of pass that. Right. No, what I was saying, not do Benchwalk, but do something that gets a community organized around something gets the community out and appreciating what it is mm -hmm. they're doing and why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Pulaski Park should be done, first phase should be done this spring. Um, there may be something around that. Yeah. For the old Yeah. So. Yeah. And there'll be a performance stage. That'll be the first time that uh, maybe you guys think. Uh, yeah, like high school. Are Age musicians to perform that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the, I. Yeah. Get the tones out of it. Get the improv. Get the improv too. Yeah, I mean, any, anything that anyone <laughs> you guys think that they're really, I mean, you know, come up with the stupidest idea you have and see if that you can make it make sense. That's that's, you know. That's what you guys. That's what you guys do really well, and that's what you've done. Is have had done very well, and you've made a difference. You guys have really made a difference on a number of legislative decisions in the city of Northampton that ten years ago no one was doing anything about. So, 
Yeah. What Bill was saying about like anything that you walk around Rockhampton that annoys you or you think should be done differently. Any pet peeves? That one crosswalk in front of City Hall is like kind of really bad crosswalk. Like what, that's like, cross yeah, a lot of the crosswalks. Oh. Also, that because they're unnoticeable, or they're yeah, and it's like they're just like it's like the long, it's like the crosswalk route makes no sense. It's like the longest crosswalk ever. And I always feel like and I'm gonna get hit there. And the parked cars you can't see. Yeah, and also that's the same. I guess it's Smith, but like the Smith would have to. But when you're trying to pull out from Smith and trying to take a left oh, turn, that is like horrible. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they really didn't like their like off the college lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's possible. Uh, takes forever. Mm -hmm. it's, this uh, the um the college lane onto Elm Street yeah. by Helen Hills. Chapel. Yeah. Some sales hills are yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There well, the the crosswalks they have at Smith they have what are modern designs they have what are called bump outs mm -hmm. where you actually before you're even in the street. You're already in. There's a pavement little bump out that you stand in, so that the drivers can see you before you even enter the crosswalk. Um, and it also, when you channel cars down, it makes people slow down automatically when they see more things to their sides. And and that's why it's also some of those crosswalks are raised and bumpy. Those are that's a traffic calming mechanism as well. Or it has a little island. He yeah, has a little island, or sometimes crossing lights. You know, the, for instance, down by Cereos, from Hungry Ghosts to Cereos. Oh, yeah. There's actually a crossing light, no one ever uses it, but there's actually a built in solar powered crossing light that, that's supposed to alert cars to stop. Yeah, um, it was in front of the high school. No, yeah. actually use those. Like they use that one yeah. in front of the high school, actually. Yeah, they do. I've like, never stopped at one of those. You've never stopped at When it's blinking, you don't stop? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Georgie, we're on TV, so you. <laughs> well, I can share that. Okay, because I'm not a fan of I know I stop whenever I see a person. So That's like, good. That's good. <laughs> That's always you good. don't hit them. Yeah. <laughs> That's. Yeah. I feel like Elm Street is like not safe. That's a scary Traffic thing. wise. I know, between the bike lanes and the pedestrians and, and the cars, cars, cars and the bike lanes. I just think that, honestly, I don't know what you could do about this, but the Smith students are so bad. Like, I always ran over to Smith students yeah, coming like, here. Like, because they walked into the middle of the God they have screen awareness for them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was dark. They just yeah. walked into the road. Smithies are. Yeah, especially it's bad. In the winter, yeah. it's oh, yeah. 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 yeah, there's just walk out and there's like. And it's not like I don't understand because most places can't do that. Yeah. Like I don't know. It's well, the Smith problem, and that's why all those traffic calming systems went in because Elm Street runs right to the middle of their campus. So in their perspective, it's their campus. They don't think of it as the major thoroughfare between towns, and that it's just it's even a state highway. So. They're just walking across campus and there's this part the where it's never even look. look. The, and, and, it's, and it's it's and it's it's and they have such nice crosswalks. They have the nice crosswalks. And that actually that's part of the other problem is and when you do traffic calming, education is one of the aspects where you're training the people one to stop if they're in a car and two if you're a pedestrian is to not presume that the car's going to stop every time without even looking. So it's tricky. It is tricky, but the Smith every year tries to educate their students about the fact that you, because the reason that all that stuff is there is that eight years ago, I think uh, a Smith, two Smith students were killed. So. I know there was just another accident. Someone well, there was a motorcycle fatality at, on Paradise Road. Oh, not that one, but I just read that on, like a UMass associate professor passed right, away. Right, uh, he hit a UMass professor. Mm -hmm. UMass is even worse, actually. UMass is so, so bad. bad. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, oh, that one road where it's just like constant, yeah. like crosswalks. And yeah, they they, they don't pay and they, they 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 have really they like they should. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah, 30,000 so students, and so they're yeah. all just, and it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Could we do something like, get a light going, like stop light you can what you can do is, and you can talk to Ryan O'Donnell when he comes because he's a head of the Transportation Parking Commission, and what they do, and he can explain that to you actually, he'd be good for two purposes, because he can explain the process by which you get lights or crosswalks or curb cuts for handicap access or a stop sign, and it's elaborate, it, there's an elaborate process, and it's, but, and there's a logic behind it, he, 
break it down for you. Yeah. That'd be really helpful to just talk to them about that. But I think you should also talk to them about things about bike lane safety and, and crosswalks that you think are kind of hazardous that, from your experience, mm -hmm. um, you know, what you should probably do is have Georgie drive around town and find all the places he doesn't stop and then mark those as dangerous locations. And you can do that. Yeah, Sometimes when I see people just on the road, on the sidewalk, they look like they're looking into the road and it stops and they're on a crosswalk. So that's kind of awkward. The next one, stop, like, is really good. You know? Well, the other problem is there's no parked cars there, so that's not an issue, but they literally just don't look. Well, in the morning, it's even worse, when this, particularly this time of year, because the sun's very low and it's in the driver's eyes when they're driving into town. And Smith students don't know that or put that together. They step out, yeah, drivers out. can't see. They cannot see. Um, you see people, and it's even worse in the winter, and you see people like this with their, with their visors down, they're trying to see what the hell's walking in front of them or if anything's mm -hmm. walking in front of them. Or even like a window down. Yeah, and that's when many of the accidents occur. But there's not much we can, we can't alter the direction of the sun. Yeah. We don't have that power, but I mean, there, there yet. might be something else. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. Well, the Youth Commission can do many great things, so if you put your minds to it, you can alter the course of the sun. <laughs> but I think we sure start smaller. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. Or just move the road. Yeah, that's the other issue. So, but the other the other thing, the discussion you guys prompted with Benchwalk was some of the people were talking about how we use public space. What do you guys think downtown should look like? What do you think would be better? Would it be better to expand the public space or narrow it down? Would it be, um, you know, what about regulations for buskers or what about food trucks or what about, you know, what do you guys think? What do you think would make downtown rot? What do you think makes downtown stupid? I think that's a that's a good conversation to have. If you guys have some ideas about that. We can advance those ideas with recommendations to the planning board and to the, the council and to the mayor. Especially with the park, you know, being yeah. renovated. Yeah. It's like a, it's a great time for discussion. Something's got to work with that. Public space just kind of isn't effective. We have like a lot of nice public space, but I feel like it's not necessarily as effective as it could be. And I don't know like what we would do about that, but it's just like, I feel like when Pulaski Park had like that, like the fun playground, that was when it was at its best. But I feel like, I guess there's nothing we can do now that the plan's in effect, but it's just like, it's not, I feel like it's the public space is necessarily, it's used in the way that people go there, but it's like you don't go there to like have a jolly good picnic. Right. And I think that that's like a problem. Well, remember, and also what counts as public space is sidewalks. Yeah. Those are public spaces too, and um, the the park actually will be. You actually can have a picnic in the park when it's done because it's actually designed for stuff like that. But will people? <laughs> That's a good question. I feel like if you make it like a, a um, poster of the Plaza Park plan, so. Yeah, can they bring that on board? Yeah, it should be out out there, but the. Uh, but and the, will the park work with sidewalks? Does it make sense? Does it yeah. you know? Um, it will, uh, but I mean, most of our conflicts downtown happen on the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So how do you make that matter? Conflicts. conflicts, people being solicited by panhandlers and it makes them feel uncomfortable, they don't feel safe, so they don't they feel trapped and they can't walk around. Um, the, that's the biggest one, but. Can I, this is what? Yeah, here's the kind of, this is Main Street there, yeah. The, here's Main Street. And this is like the area that's ma mostly used now as like the bus stop? Well, no, the bus stop's still closer to the academy. This. Yeah, right about there. So that, this, that front part that Stephanie was pointing to is going to be an arcade. It's going to have tables and chairs and trees. And so arcade? Arcade? It's an arcade. Well, arcade is a, an architectural term. So it's like a it's like a cafe area basically where people can sit and eat. And so, like when you think of like Central Park, where there's people playing chess, like right? Or stuff like that would be something like that. Mm -hmm. That's, That's a nice place just to hang out, like sit and like go to the right. benches downtown. But if you're not buying something at like a restaurant or right. there's not all that many places to just. 
Yeah. That's, that's really interesting. You can buy food in any of the restaurants and go sit there and eat it. You can sit there and, on your laptop and use the really wheezy municipal Wi-Fi we have. <laughs> you can, uh, um, Is Wi-Fi going to be a thing? We actually have municipal Wi-Fi that's all around the city hall. In fact, I'm on that right now, but it's not great. It's not great. It's pretty, it's pretty wheezy. But um, I was actually thinking like this is this is probably be expensive, but we could like get businesses to collaborate maybe and pitch in like small percentage of the full price to get like an established Wi-Fi for all of the downtown area. So that like you wouldn't have because right now there's Wi-Fi if you go into the store and it's often like a guest Wi-Fi. Yeah. Or you have to do a password. But if there was one that was like for the general public or like mm -hmm. visitor who works. Yeah. Amherst has a citywide municipal Wi-Fi, but it's really slow. Slow yeah, than DSL. Is that the one on the buses? Which town has it on the buses? Um actually some some bus systems and then all the like Peter Pans and those guys all have Wi-Fi on there. And the train does too. For municipal Wi-Fi, the trick is the problem is you have buildings that block the Wi-Fi signal. It's the best robust system. You have to have a number of nodes that actually transmit it. This one is you can get the one that I'm on now that I keep getting bounced off every 20 minutes, but it's you can get it in the park if you're close to this building. <laughs> it's but if you go too deep in the park, you can't get it. But I mean, that's something you guys can talk about too, is, is uh, broadband access and things like that. Actually, Councilor O'Donnell and I are talking about doing um, a regional municipal broadband, making it, taking it away from Comcast and making it a city utility and allow faster download, upload speeds, a gig up and a gig down maybe. And that would provide, they're not, one, a lot of families can't afford to pay cable prices to have broadband, to have computers and, and Wi-Fi access. So there's a digital divide. There's uh, poor families that don't have the access that you guys have to um, computers, or at least to the internet. So there's some discussion there. Another phenomenon that happens in Northampton that's kind of, that's unique somewhat, the, um, our, most of our houses that are constituted as more impoverished neighborhoods or neighborhoods that are subsidized housing are on the periphery. They're all Hampshire Heights and Florence Heights and Meadowbrook. And they're not, they don't have access to services. They're very isolated, very low voter registration, very low services. And we have the South Street apartments are the only ones here in downtown that actually have um, subsidized housing. And it affects the diversity in the community, but also isolates whole communities that don't know that they have access to things. Right, because if you're like all the way out on Ryan Road, and right. there's, there's I mean, if you, if you, the kids who go to Ryan Road School from Florence Heights, there's no sidewalk to Ryan Road. I noticed that. There's no, there's no, the buses are really infrequent. They have to take the PBTA buses to the school mm -hmm. because they're too close to qualify for school busing. And what, they probably run like once an hour? Or? Yeah, it's, and it's, and if you have to stay after school and your parents don't have a car, how do you get home? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it, yeah, it's really kind of a lousy deal. And, you know. When you compare it to like tw every 20 minutes, buses from here, you know, and yeah. stuff like that, it's just exactly. not an equal distribution. Yeah, there's, there's some, hard some definite it. disparity. By the way, this is the uh, imaginary image of sort of what it's going to look like, but it's the, that's the arcade there. That'll be done this spring? Yeah. That, so which part is the first stage? This is the first stage. The second stage is, you know, where the park drops off the cliff? It's that, like, go, go back and forth and have, like, an overlay. Right. Then it'll be graded down. It'll look like an amphitheater. You can sit on the lawn, and there might be a stage down at the bottom. Because um, there's like just that parking lot right there. Right. So it's not like a, you know. Yeah, there's basically a cliff and then the parking lot that's not particularly appealing. So that's that will be an extension of this parking over there. Yeah. Yes. There's a lethal. Yeah. We just we completely drove out the mountain goat. They drove out the what? If we're getting rid of the cliffs, where will the mountain goat go? Oh my god. <laughs> well, because <laughs> well, like, there used to be the mountain goats. 
door. Oh, right. <laughs> and now that we're going to eliminate the clip, there's going to be no place for him to live anymore in North Hampton. Yeah, no, that's an interesting point. I, I, <laughs> actually, you're talking about an issue that's a bigger issue in North Hampton. Is it fact that there's two shop therapy? And we have to talk to you about how to go. You know why? But I mean, there's a bigger issue is that a lot of downtown businesses that sell stuff, stuff instead of food and drinks, they're being, they're leaving, they're closing up. Online purchasing is pushing them out. The rents are pushing them out. So what's, why are all these stores closing? Why did Faces almost close? Why did, uh, why, why, did, um, why are there empty storefronts in downtown? North so that's another conversation. What's, what's causing that besides online competition? It's like that's a thing, but you know, it's still business. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's other types, like you said, rents and other factors. Yeah. That's. Yeah, I feel like faces, that's the guy just sort of got bored. He did. That's pretty much right. His dad started it, and he decided he didn't want to do it. It's so large. So it's all different. Yeah. The cafe. Oh, yes, the bottom floor, back, what used to be like Yeah, well, not there was It's open now, right? It's open. So, yeah, it's a nice spot, but it's not but it also is nice to go back a lot of sea to it but there will be a mature yeah this is the like a this is like 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 this it would be remarkable if there's too much of it, this much of it. Yeah. It's definitely not as Yeah, exactly. Well, I think it's maybe more family friendly, but, you know, true. Just and stuff like that. The more you can do that, you know, like, you can do that. Should they have more things? What's it going to stay at home? That's like a chance. And then also, I think we should talk to the DA more and maybe work on like an opioid prevention program potentially. Because, like Michaela said, those posters aren't effective, and if anything, they're trying to approach us most. So we should and be the ones talking to them about what is effective. Mm -hmm. And not even just at the high school, but yeah. like Northampton downtown in right. general. Which is why it would be yeah. great to get other people here from other schools. Right, and you know, there's Northampton Prevention Coalition does like those large posters on the corner of the I've been thinking on like billboards and stuff. I know, so it's like you like, yeah, feel stuff downtown. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Poster campaign or something. Yeah. Is it yes, it's relevant in the schools, but it's also just the town in general. Downtown in particular. Right. 
Um, and then maybe something with the unveiling of Plasky Park, um, like having students somehow yeah, involved in like a celebration of it. Yeah, or some sort of like after the unveiling, like a week of like early summer or something, like different events, different groups. Like I know I think we mentioned the improv and different, you know, scene yeah. groups. And that would be like that, or even theater. Yeah, like a week long thing. That would be like yeah. Anything else people have in mind? Oh, you did your animal thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, my animal thing. Um, cats. Cats. Kittens. Okay, refresh our. Okay, well, I think that, the, I mean, I know there are programs in place where, like, people with disabilities get to, like, experience, or not get to experience, but get to, um, like, connect with, like, animals who are trained for that. Right, like therapy dogs. Yeah, yeah, I would think that word. Right. And, but if we did like a program with the schools, with like the Northampton, like particularly like elementary schools, with like, and then like kittens and stuff, instead of maybe like a big cat, or like, or if like there's allergies or something, different animals, right, yeah, or like guinea cool. pigs or something. Mm -hmm. That I feel like that that like if it's like a big if it's like a community thing where all, like different schools come together because if it's just at one yeah. school it's like that's like I feel like if it's a lot of schools and it's like the parents are involved too that that could be like and then they can donate some man <laughs> not donates that's the wrong word but let's uh, and just like people who have these therapy animals or want their animals to become therapy animals that that could be potentially like beneficial. If it like also meets regularly, I guess, that that would probably make more sense than just meeting once. Mm -hmm. I know Donald says definitely thank you for the invitation. Okay, so on for next time? So, yeah. So, so you can put them on the agenda. All right, I will, yeah. You were out of the country for the last year. Anything you came back and realized, you're like, oh, I love Northampton so much. I'm really happy. <laughs> <home. laughs> I'm really happy. Nothing to change. What did, what did, what? I was saying nothing to change. Um, no, definitely, oh, goodness. Um, I was in Oman. Do you know where that is? No. Jordan. No. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, you were in Oman or Oman? I was in Oman, not okay. Oman. Okay. It's spelled the same in Arabic. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, uh, but it's next to Yemen in Saudi Arabia, so I was there for a year. And I just think we really take for granted how, I want to say liberal, but that's not the right word, just like how accepting people are in Northampton, because it's really quite lovely. Um, yeah, yeah. So maybe like rather than focusing on trying to fix everything, like celebrate what we can have more. Yeah, definitely. It's just, and also there's just like, really good food here, and people should appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we were just voted one of the 10 best small cities. Yeah, that's true, I saw that. Uh, that girl's chair. Wasn't that by, like, a Massachusetts, Massachusetts paper, though? It was, was uh, a... Uh, well, the list was by... It's a, it's a Wellesley group, a, well, a company based in Wellesley. So they're already... And they didn't state. rank Wellesley, oh. which is one of the wealthiest communities in the state of Massachusetts, so... Um, and they, they, and they went, they, but they went, they went to cities all over the country of varying sizes. Uh, uh, Northampton ranked eight out of ten. Nice. So. Can get any other Massachusetts ones? Were there any other Massachusetts yeah. ones? Yeah, Chickabee was three hundred and forty something. What was number one? Boulder or something? Or oh, it's Boulder always Boulder. Boulder. It might be like, Boulder. Yeah. 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 No, it wasn't Boulder. 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 I, I want to move to Boulder. 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 Boulder's the uh, It's the it's best like Rockland. It's a really good job. I have a lot of friends that Rockland there. But that's cool. It's, it's actually like Rockland. It's like Rockland. Like Rockland. Like Rockland. Rockland. Pretty Rockland, but it's basically Rockland. It's basically Rockland. It's like Rockland. Are you guys going to walk me to Sabres? Yeah, I'm going to walk you to Sabres. Yeah, I'm going to walk you to Sabres. Just 
Thank you.